In this episode, we're talking about CNC feeds and speeds, calculators, and side loading Fusion 360 tool libraries. Back doors are not secrets. Are we still doing that? Stick around. Listen, I'm not a machinist, but I play one on YouTube. And while it's not my profession, my projects speak for themselves. It comes down to design, technique, and discipline, all of which determines your individual results. The more you research and practice, the better you become at fill in the blank. There's an old saying that you don't hear much anymore. It's practice makes perfect. It's still true, and there are no real shortcuts, so put in the work. Listen, there are way more tools in my shop than there are hours in the day, and while I strive to improve each day, being the best at everything is less important to me than being able to produce great results. I'm driven and passionate to learn what I need to accomplish the goals and task at hand. Whether it's the design, engineering, or fabrication of a project, there are lots of rabbit holes that will compete for your time. There's no question whether you can accomplish something. The question is, what's it worth for you to accomplish it? CNC is like that. It's one of those skills that demand your full attention. These machines are working inherently with the laws of physics to carve your object out of some material. And it's entirely up to you as to the strategy it uses and how well it performs. One day CNC machines will be intelligent enough to run themselves to automatically compensate for forces, machine limitations, and bad feeds and speeds. But not today, that's on you and me. For me, it's important to get good at ramping up on new skills. Being able to pivot as needed has always served me well. This is one of those skills. It's gonna take you some time to master, but there are tools that can help you out along the way. Sort of like training wheels, but even the pros use them. So where do you start? People naturally look for answers online, shortcuts from someone that's taken the time to learn, a subject matter expert. That's not me, but I can help. Starting with your end mill vendors, you'll get surface feet per minute and chip load values for specific materials and bits and lots of general recommendations, as well as how different coatings can increase those numbers. Rules of thumb like increasing feeds or reducing speeds to eliminate chatter. Use the largest tool with the shortest length of cut. Loads of formulas to calculate RPM, inches per tooth, inches per revolution, surface feet per minute, spreadsheets, web pages, you name it, it's out there. Even books on the topic. And as you grapple with all those acronyms, formulas, and rules, applying them to what your machine is capable of is yet another challenge. How rigid is the machine gantry? How much cutting force does it have? How much torque does the spindle have? What's the RPM range and how does it relate to torque? Basically the power curve. How does all this impact calculated speeds and feeds and chip load capabilities of your machine? Using a specific end mill on a specific material. For consumer grade router CNC's it's complex and there's no single answer. You have to take all these things into consideration to determine the right recipe for your machine configuration and setup. There are a few software applications out there that try to solve this. They incorporate all of the above formulas into a single interface, provide sliders to tune results based on some of your machine capabilities. But even these are not cut and dry. Some producing inconsistent results with gimmicks that confuse more than help, and in the end leave most owners reverting to conservative feeds and speeds not getting the most from their machines and tooling. You may know I have two CNC machines, both Carbide 3D, one Nomad 883 Pro, and the other is a heavily modified Shapeoko XL. I have a video on breaking down all the Shapeoko upgrades if you're interested in that. In summary, one is rigid with no torque and the other has torque but isn't rigid. These variables are huge in the calculation of feeds and speeds and significantly differ. To accommodate for the differences in machining capability, as most hobbyists do, I use conservative milling calculations or stick to recipes that I've proven on my machines. In practice, that'll get good results eventually, but you won't get any achievement awards from fellow machinists. And at the end of the day, without pushing your machine limits, how do you know exactly what you're leaving on the table in terms of power and efficiency when the machine characteristics aren't part of the equation? The formulas and spreadsheets will get you pretty far. Practice and intuition will get you further. For most machinists, that's all you really need. You're goddamn right. Maybe so, but in my experience, a good tool saves time and money. And that applies to milling calculations as well. So where are all the killer apps that can figure out all this stuff for us? Well, it's evolutionary. The tools are getting better, but most aren't quite there yet. Dozens of formulas, web page calculators, and vendor recommendations later, I've found two that really stand out in the community. This G-Wizard, HSM Advisor, and FS Wizard. And since the last two are produced by the same developer, let's just call it two. Let's cut to the chase. This really comes down to how well the developer implemented a combination of machinist formulas, machine profiles, and the laws of physics. G-Wizard's been around longer than most hobbyist CNC's. They have a large internet presence, good marketing material, and they seem to have all the answers. 
The software can define machine profiles, is able to tune parameters to be more aggressive or conservative. They claim to evaluate thousands of options to determine the right tool and settings to perform a specific depth and width of cut for a specific material. It almost sounds too good to be true. This all sounds great, but after using the software for a week, I still ended up not being able to use the feeds and speeds calculations with any success, even after configuring the software for speeds, power, and torque limitations of my machines. They were inconsistent and just wrong, even at the most conservative settings. Reaching out to the developer, I was told that, contrary to my judgment, G-Wizard provides calculations that us mortals simply can't believe would ever work. Bow to your sensei. Bow to your sensei! And if I were uncomfortable with going that fast, I could enable safe mode, of which he's never heard of any case where that wasn't conservative enough. Okay, that sounded pretty confident, so I took his advice and just to be safe, split the numbers in half and, well... <laughs> He later followed up with a patch which corrected a bug, but I continued to see inconsistent behavior and calculations. I opted for a refund after losing a couple days of productivity. Not to say the tool doesn't work fine for some folks, but I feel most hobbyists would blame it on themselves before calling out a vendor of this size on a calculation. I don't know what they're using it for, and this was just my experience. But back to what I said earlier, it's a good tool saves time and money. In my experience, this was not a good tool. The math was off and the functionality was inconsistent. Definitely needs more work in unit testing on hobbyist grade machine profiles. So at this point you're probably asking, what do I know and what makes me an expert since I'm still learning myself? Something I haven't shared on this channel, in addition to all this fun stuff that I do, I have 20 plus years experience working in technical roles ranging from solution engineering, architecture, design development of enterprise class software solutions. That said, I've only embarked on a few personal commercial endeavors and it's not trivial. And I certainly didn't want to do it for free for a product that I paid money for. That said, while the dust was settling, I was very happy to come across the HSM Advisor software. Although the price is a little bit more, the quality and functionality is also better. To be fair, the first thing I did was create machine profiles for both the Nomad 883 and the Shape Poco XL with the 2.2 kilowatt spindle. For starters, I went with a 8th inch end mill, 8th inch depth of cut, milling 6061. Calculated the numbers, punched them into adaptive pocket cut in Fusion 360, ran the post-process and hit go. So far so good, and that's a leap forward for milling 6061 on a stock Nomad. For kicks, I went extreme with a quarter inch end mill and quarter inch depth of cut milling 6061 as well. To put that into perspective, I've never had good results running any quarter inch end mills on the Nomad, much less in aluminum. This is ambitious at best on the Nomad, but these numbers actually look good, and there's only one way to find out. The results were great, well, given the limitation of the Nomad, which is what the whole point of this exercise was for, to find a tool that can provide hypothetical numbers that are in the ballpark for given machine limitations. Diving into HSM Advisor further, the layout and functionality is well thought out. First selecting the material as well as defining specific machine profiles, next loading an end mill from one of the many stock or your own custom libraries, you define your cut parameters or let the system calculate them for you. And from that, you can apply a few milling techniques like chip thinning, high speed ramps, bores, and also to compensate for ball end mill scallop. All of these settings can be saved as cuts for a tool, adding notes and ratings, which is real nice. 
For me, the default numbers worked great, and I found that tuning them with speeds and feed sliders helped me to compensate for machine or workpiece specific limitations. Things like how well the piece is fixtured, you could dial back the performance slider to get less aggressive. On the Nomad, chatter associated with anti-backlash nuts or lead screws can be addressed by reducing the feed slider. For aluminum on the Nomad, I didn't need to back off on the speeds as much as I expected. The calculated chip load worked out good. Running the jobs, they sounded pretty good for the Nomad. Admittedly, leaving some spindle power on the table to prevent inevitable chatter while pushing it too hard. So definitely no stalled spindles here. The milling operation actually produced Swarf, though not very big chips, chips nonetheless. I definitely felt comfortable leaving the Nomad to run these numbers and can easily see how this will work well for the 2.2 kilowatt spindle on the Shepoko. I was concerned about having all of my tools defined in Fusion 360, but fortunately HSM Advisor now has the ability to import and export tool libraries. So a week ago that wasn't the case, but we'll get back to that. So to use this, we simply export the tool library from Fusion 360 and then import it into HSM Advisor. It's a real piece of cake. Now I can use those tools in my calculations. In other areas of HSM Advisor, you can manage your tool database along with a plethora of other reference tools and calculators all cleanly implemented and useful. Things like thread calculations, size reference tables, nine different machinist calculators, and more. HSM also has a mobile app um, that's called FS Wizard. It's a lightweight version. It allows you to do a lot of what you can do in HSM Advisor with a few limitations. Real great stuff and the math is solid. For me, like the machines I use, this tool gave me the capability that would otherwise take a lot of time to develop. It's something that immediately improved the quality of the work I produce on my machines. And as I continue to learn and improve, HSM Advisor provides a context to try new scenarios that would have otherwise required a lot of trial and error, you know, learning mistakes and things of that sort. In the end, I really like this tool, uh, but don't trust me, go try it out for yourself. They have a free trial over on their website, so give it a shot. The developer is actually offered a 20% discount for my viewers if you use the code DIYENG over at their website. So whether you're a pro or coming up to speed, go check it out. I'm sure you'll like it. So that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed this pragmatic look at feeds and speeds and a couple of tools that can up your game in no time. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. It'll help keep you in the loop on future uploads. We've got some really cool stuff coming up, so stick around. And in the meantime, go build something, be safe, and have fun. I can't wait to see you next time. Hey, if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. It's how we're building the community. Also allow me to bring better content. Also, check me out on these other social networks. There's lots of cool stuff there, too. See ya. Woo, that was a long one. That's what she said. <laughs>